gas training, unvented cylinders, uh, Q&A really, questions and answers. We recently did a video at Viva Training Academy, we did a couple of videos. We did one on how to service an unvented cylinder. And we also did one on fault finding on an unvented cylinder. So please check out them videos as well. I will add some links below. In them videos, we, we received quite a lot of questions. So this video today, we're gonna to try and go through bullet points of how to service an unvented cylinder, but we're also gonna try and answer as many of them questions as we can. And if you do have any more questions, again, please put them in the comments below and we'll try as best to answer them as good as we can. But as always, just make sure that you read the installation instructions. That's more important than any video you'll ever see on YouTube. Things change over time. Different people interpret things in different ways as well. I've just had a, a, a just a conversation with somebody today that we disagreed about, and then we went and found out what what it was. So we all have. Um, interpret it, things in different ways so it's always best to find them things out but in this video today we're going to try and answer as many of them questions as we can um, so I'm going to pass you over to Roy and Roy's going to go through um, some of the questions try and answer some of the questions and then at the end of the video I'm also going to go through the questions and if there's any of them that's not been answered I'm going to try and go through scroll through them and try and answer as many of them as I can as well uh, as always, if you can please put a thumbs up, like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Really appreciate that. And it's really important that you do that at the start of the video as well, um, because it just helps with with YouTube, with um, how they share, out whatever. Um, so, yeah, thanks very much. And uh, let's go over to Roy. Thanks, Al. Hi, guys. It's Roy Fugler here at the Viva Training Academy over in Halifax. And today we're going to have a quick look at servicing uh, an invented cylinder. We've done a video on this, but we're just going to do some bullet points just to pick up on some of the comments that we had from the previous video. Um, so before we start, obviously to work on an invented cylinder, it's a controlled service. You've got to have your G3 ticket. That's most important. So that's the first thing. So starting at the beginning, we've got the isolation valve. So that should be uh, nice and visible. We've then got the inlet control group. Um, so that's got the pressure reducing valve in there. We've also got a filter in there. So I've got one that I've stripped out. It's important on a service to make sure that that filter's clean. These things can be stripped out. The generally factory set, so the preset, uh, and the setting on that one should be the same pressure that you put in your expansion vessel. So in this one's case, the expansion vessel is set to three and a half bar. That's a three and a half bar uh, pressure reducing valve. Expansion relief, for you guys that are more used to boilers, that would be normally called your pressure relief. It's there in case we've got a build up of pressure. So typically, that will uh, start to activate if we've got no expansion in the expansion vessel. So the expansion vessel has lost its charge. The other thing that you can come across, we haven't got one in here, um, I want to call a bubble top. Some of the manufacturers, instead of having an external expansion vessel, vessel they'll have an internal air bubble in the top of them. Um, heat ray sardia do them, ozo do them, and I'll come back to that uh, in a minute or two. So we've got that in there, there's a check valve in there, um, so once the water gets past it can't get back out there. That's there to make sure that we don't get any cross contamination. So it's always important just to make sure the filter's clear because the customer could be complaining that their water flow rate is reducing. So from my um, expansion relief, that's what we call the D1. So the D1, the discharge one, links the expansion relief and the temperature and pressure relief to the air brake. Now in here, it's a little bit longer than it should be. Um, it should be no more than 600 millimetres long. And the thing with that is, on a service, we should be opening up both the expansion relief and the temperature and pressure relief just to check them. So coming back to that one, what you're going to get is that's going to be dripping cold water as the boiler is heating the cylinder, or if it's what we call a direct cylinder where it's only heated up by immersion heaters, on heat up, 
there's no expansion so it's going to be dripping cold water through there so that's your d1 into the tun dish your tun dish should be at least one size bigger between your d1 and your d2 your d2 goes from your tun dish so if this as it is is 15 mil that should be a minimum of 22 mil and there is in the manufacturer's instructions uh, a chart based on a length of pipe nine meters in length and then if you had to go over that the equivalent length you increase it so the main thing with your d2 the drop must be a minimum of 300 mil before your first bend and that's whether it's a uh, an elbow straight out of a packet or a made bend using a bending machine or if anybody's old-fashioned like me a bending spring a bend is a bend is a bend it just means it's bent um, the restriction i totally agree on an elbow is a little bit more than a bend but that's what the regs say your fall on that d2 should be one in 200 so it should fall away it can be a little bit more and it should terminate safe and visibly so we'd always pop out and have a look where that's terminating just to make sure that it's not causing any danger to anybody and again as with the expansion relief part of the test that we do we crack them open let them run a little bit, little bit so that we're proving they're not backing up we're proving we've got nothing got into there and caused a blockage and we're proving that when we shut the valves off they actually shut off so that's that so coming back to the bubble top it's quite simple with an expansion vessel if it's lost its charge we charge it up as we would any expansion vessel um, that we have on boiler so we turn the uh, the isolation valve off open up a hot tap and we've took the pressure out of it and then we just get a um, a foot pump or a, a pressure uh, pump and pop pop it up to the correct pressure with a bubble top what we do the same thing open the uh, close off the isolation valve open a hot tap normally at low level the lowest level tap and then we open the tmp because the tmp should have air above it that's what forms the bubble so we open the tmp and wait for the water to stop running out as soon as it starts gurgling there's no water coming out we shut that off so that's then allowed air in there so when we turn the cold mains water back on that traps that air bubble in there so you've replenished the bubble it's something that uh, may need to be done approximately every 18 months now these things should be serviced it should be serviced annually it's part of the benchmark scheme with it being a controlled service like installing a central heating boiler they've got to be registered through a competent person scheme so any of you guys one of the questions that were asked do i need to be a member of a competent person scheme if you're a member of gas safe so you're a gas safe registered engineer you can actually register your unvented cylinders through gas safe um, that's classed as a competent person scheme obviously if you're not a gas safe engineer you're not a gas engineer you're perhaps a plumber out there you'd need to be a member of a competent person scheme or fill a building control notice in and send that to the building control so that's the two ways that you can do it building control notice is normally done before work commences the uh, competent person scheme is usually done after the work is completed so other things that we're going to check we check down that the thermostats you've normally got a couple of thermostats one will be for your motorized valve the other one for immersion heater they usually have an immersion heater back up make sure they're not set too low because we don't want legionella don't want them too high we always use say 60 65 that's now sort of dropped to 50 55 so we've got them set there and we can check the operation and i did show how to do that in the previous video so we're making sure that the two-part valve if the overheat start the eco energy cut off that's what we call them on unvented cylinders if that activates the two-part valve would close because it kills power to it and i showed that on the on a previous video so that's something else that we can check making sure the ecos the ecos on these have got to be manual reset that's all part of the spec so there's a little pop out button that comes out so if you're going out to one the customer says that they've got no hot water and if it's uh, the, the boiler, you'd be looking to make sure that the if the two-part valve isn't opening, just check that the eco's not popped the stat, and then you'd be looking at the, the control stat to make sure that that's not failing. Um, if it's a direct cylinder, so you've got no central heating boiler fill, uh, warming the coil up, again, you'd be looking at the eco cutting power off to the immersion heater, so you could check that using a multimeter. Obviously, 
If we're getting multimeters out, it's safe isolation, TB118, technical bulletin 118. Um, we keep harping on about it. I'm not going to apologise for harping on about it. The reason we keep talking about it, we still get gas engineers, plumbing and heating engineers that still are getting electric shocks through not safely isolating. So it's something we're going to keep talking about. It's all about health and safety. Um, so if you've got any more questions, anything we haven't covered, I'm going to do a future video showing how to wire them up. Um, but if you've got any questions at all about uh, the unvented cylinders, any other things to do with the servicing, stick a comment down below, give us a like, give us a thumbs up. Um, we're more than happy to answer your questions. As I keep saying in my book, there's no such thing as a stupid question. It's stupid not to ask a question you don't know the answer to. I don't know all the answers. I can ask Al, if Al doesn't know, we can research it. Um, so hopefully that's been of use to you. If you've got any questions, please ask them. Please come back to us. Give us a few, few comments. And until next time, it's Roy Fugler from the Viva Training Academy in Halifax saying bye-bye. Thank you for that once again, Roy. Um, and again, as always, thank you to Viva Training Academy. Um, Viva Training Academy putting a lot of time and effort into helping and sharing knowledge and helping new trainees, helping people that's been doing the job a long time as well and that just need a little bit of a refresher um, so thank you to them what I'm going to do now I'm just going to go through some of the questions on the other video and if you haven't done, or, done so already please put a comment below and also if you can please put a thumbs up on the video it really helps um, with the videos so let's go and have a look at these these questions questions and answers and this is from the first video that we did, or one of the videos we did, which is unvented cylinder for hot water, and it's the fault finding video. And these first few comments are just more or less saying how amazing Roy is as an instructor, which I can only I can only agree with that. As I say, I've had Roy's trained me many a time over years. And in the answer to you, Mad Bro. Um, hydrogen, I think we'll do, we'll do a video on this and we'll go into this, it's, can't just answer it on here, um, we'll do a full video on that. And just a few more thanking us for the videos, all I can ask is that you keep putting comments below and keep putting thumbs up on the videos and, you know, we'll keep coming back and we'll, we'll do more videos for you. And Kevin asks about anti-vac valves. Um, I would say the best thing you can, what I can say to you about that is just always read the manufacturer's instructions. Certainly in some circumstances, you definitely need them. Um, if you remember, Elliot put a video on a while back where one of the cylinders had got damaged. So yeah, it's definitely a good idea. And Daz asks about the balanced connection and he can't possibly see how it works. So if we have a look on there, you can see the flow of the water, which direction it's going in. And as you can see on this part of the picture, the balanced part is after the pressure reducing valve. You just see that angle inside valve and you can just see it. I hope that helps. And this is just a response to Ian. Uh, Roy's already answered this question, but a heat only boiler is just a boiler by itself really. And the, the system boiler, is the boiler but then it's got the expansion vessel and the pump and the PRV and things built inside I can do a full video on that as well to help you and this is just some of the questions on how to service an unvented hot water cylinder Roy has gone through quite a lot of this and the first question is how to restart the air gap on a cylinder uh, and Roy has gone through that on this video already Harry, we're going to do a full video on wiring and how to wire and overheat and all that type of stuff. We'll do a full, um, yeah, we'll do, we'll, we'll, we'll look at that as good as we can for you. And then we've got quite a few more well wishers and, and thanking us for the videos. Great work, guys. Much appreciated. Um, so, yeah, it, hopefully this video has been really good for the trainees. If you've not watched them, them other videos that we've done on unvented then please click on them because 
I think that they're really good for you to have a look at. I just wanted to talk about the D1. So the D1 should be a maximum of 600 millimeters maximum. So I know Roy has already gone into that on this video, but I just wanted to recap on that. And then if we look at the the D2, the D2 should be 300 millimeters minimum before the first bend. You'd also want to know that it's not blocked as well. So somebody asked that question and yes, you would you pop outside and just check, just check that it's not blocked, that it's not underground or buried or somebody's had an extension and buried it or something like that. And just remember, it's very important that you check these things because these could be a bomb. They're one of the most dangerous things that we can work on. So it's important that they are checked correctly. And if you enjoy what we're doing at Viva Training Academy, please like and share. And as I say, we've done them other videos for you as well. So if you just search for unvented cylinders and maybe search my name, and then you'll see a list of unvented cylinders and different ways of testing them, etc. If you've got any questions, please put them in the comments below. And thank you for watching.